Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Uh, I don't think I've done very many of these videos laying down, but uh, I'm feeling kind of sick. I was road tripping in the heat and then skipped a couple meals and now I'm dehydrated. I'm just like sick. I know there's some easy solutions, but I'm too sick to do the easy solutions. Uh, so I'm just going to lay down, but I've been uh, peeking at Twitter and there's been a couple of... Uh, couple of threads, um, different things to talk about. Um, but, uh, one thing is just coming. So the couple things that I saw were example, uh, uh, Bruno Batista from big bang comics. He was one of those guys who, um, of the retailers who colluded to prevent people from being able to buy books. He was basically, uh, asking, uh, how can I block, uh, all of my followers? All, I don't know, 16, 18,000. And uh, I was having people from his store DM me and say, we wish we could buy Jawbreakers and Cyberfrog there, but we can't. Um, and I just said, this is the industry in 2018. Like, this is it. This is the healthiness. A store is asking how to block more customers when they won't even fulfill the orders that the customers uh, want. Uh, then I, then uh, I've, I've talking to someone who showed me an invoice after you know all the uh you know of what some indie creators uh make and uh it was it's just heartbreaking i mean we are talking books for major indies um these are people who don't get a page rate so there's some uh, so marvel and and dc are and i think dark horse and boom they'll give like you'll actually get a page rate it won't be a lot but they'll pay you a hundred something dollars per page um you usually don't get any kind of percentage but most of the indies uh, most of the other indies, you just get a percentage. So you say, like, how come all these indies are hiring mags? Well, they don't really have to pay anything except for printing. And then the printing is always kind of guaranteed to, to make that back because you, you only print what you uh, need. But, um, I mean, I've seen invoices from people for an entire team where they either got negative 400 bucks or they earned, quote, earned positive 400 bucks for it. A whole team's work. Pencil and inker, usually the same person at Indies nowadays, but colorist, letter, writer, four freaking hundred dollars. And then these same people are joining up with, I guess, Rian Johnson, the, the director of uh, the uh, last Star Wars movie, uh, The Last Jedi, and, and he's supposed to get his own trilogy. And they're really, really excited by this toxic fandom thing, but, um, you know. <laughs> The mold isn't in the entire world. The mold is in the walls in the house. So uh, I, there was a couple other things, and I just, I got, I, I, I just got this really bad feeling. I mean, I'm sick, but then I'm realizing that that these people are sick. You know, not in a little way, like you have a headache and you don't feel good, but like this is their life. You know, we're talking extreme poverty. We're talking uh, 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 living alone, working remotely alone. Um, making very little money and then seeing other people making a lot more and like what that does to you. I had, I saw one exchange and someone was roasting me and they're saying, I'm nothing because I didn't sell what Raina Telgemeier sells. For you, know, for those who don't know that, she's a supposed graphic novel. It's, she really does a young adult, but she sells millions of stuff. By that same, you know, metric, Tom King in, is a failure. You know, like every, Scott Snyder's a failure. But, uh, you know, you got pros blocking um, customers, stores blocking customers, stores bragging about blocking customers, and then pros um, saying, that's awesome, you're awesome. And I'm just, I go, oh, I'm sick today, but they're sick every day. So one of the things you do, and I was just, uh, Zaxxon was having some problems with his uh, little gaming rig the other day, and I, and I told him about... Uh, let's, you know, start troubleshooting it. I told him about last known good. What was the last known good? What was the last time that this system was working properly? And what's changed since then? And, uh, you know, obviously, the, I would say the last time the industry was truly healthy was in the 90s. You know, there were a lot of differences there. There was some more, uh, there was a lot more stores. Um, the economy was worse, actually. But um, uh, I, the things that I'm identifying as the sicknesses are some of these things can really be helped. Uh, I think one of the main sicknesses is poverty. 
Um, uh, I have been very, very poor during my adult life. I, was, I didn't grow up poor. Obviously, I'm not poor now. But uh, I spent more than a decade, uh, almost two, in very, you know, you know low working class or uh, just straight up poverty. I mean, one time I was supporting two kids and I made like 18 grand the whole year. Like, I know being poor and I know what it does to you. Uh, it makes you very, very bitter. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I had some luck uh, in that, and this might be because I didn't grow up poor. I always felt it was temporary, even when it went for almost 20 years. Um, uh, I just felt like, you know, I was flicking that, that, uh, the, the lighter, you jiggle it, you hear that there's fuel inside, you know, just, it's just, uh, it finally worked. It finally, you know, lit. Um, but uh, a lot of these people, I think they're quite, they've been poor for so long that they've, that they've lost this hope. So they don't see their own actions as contributing to their poverty. They see it as some kind of, you know, I don't know, like you're born with short legs. You're, you know, like, no, no, you know, this is, this is not the same. You're not stuck poor. There's a great line by, oh, I'm blanking on it. And he says, the reason that socialism never took hold in America is because Americans think of themselves, poor Americans think of themselves as temporarily embarrassed millionaires. The embarrassed means, of course, that they're just temporary. It's like when you got, you know, money, but you're, you, you try to buy something, your card gets declined, but you're not that bad. Because I, I got money in the bank. I know they probably just shut it off because I went cross country and they think my card got stolen, something like that. But um, poverty is bad. But the thing is that, how can I say this? People are starving so that their so-called friends won't ostracize them and they won't get work. But they are getting work, but the work they're getting is not feeding themselves. Um, and then, honestly, there's guys like me and Ethan. Ethan uh, offered a job to a young woman and was uh, very roundly and rudely rebuffed. Uh, for, uh, and she had been complaining about, uh, uh, what was it, Kieran Shake hadn't paid her. Um, and then Ethan offered her work, and then uh, she very cattily turned him down. But there's no, it's a business, you know, it's a business. As much as, you know, uh, uh, Tim Doyle likes to pretend everyone's a Nazi and Nazi this, Nazi that, he'll go and work for Metallica, and they use so called Nazi, you know, letters in some of their posters and some of their logos. Nobody cares. It's the real world. You, you, you get a gig, you take it. Um, uh, but, uh, oh man, I'm so sick, I didn't properly charge my phone. Okay, so this one will go until it's dead. So, oh, hang on. Just plug it in and keep going. Um, and so, uh, poverty is a bad one, but the problem is these people are poor because of the bad decisions they're making chasing away customers. The other one, and this is one I really had to think about, uh, is uh, working alone. I'm working remotely right right now and I'm very grateful for the job it's a very good job it's good people but it's hard it's very hard to be by yourself all the time and it makes you a little weird so now not only are you poor and I'm talking about the comic people who work at home but you're also weird um, and when comics were big in the 1990s most people worked at studios um, uh, image started because a lot of the the artists started moving to gravitate near each other whole bunch of them ended up in San Diego um, and you ended up with uh, homage which became uh, you know uh, uh, kind of became uh, image and then it became Wildstorm. you know you would have literally Wills Portatio uh, uh, Jim Lee uh, Mark Silvestri you know and then these like younger guys you know Dan Fraga and uh, and so, and uh, Rob Liefeld usually he had oh he started his own extreme studio and then he had Dan Fraga and Chapier, all those people. Uh, Mark Silvestri, he had uh, you know, David Finch, and uh, he, had a, he had a bunch of protégés. So people would tend to, to uh, uh, gravitate towards each other and then work with each other. This not only made them better, but it made them more normal. So the trend towards digital and remote works is really deleterious to people's health and the health of the industry. And the third one, of course, is that, as I've said it before, Comics is a, is a shy person's hobby, for the most part. And it's a shy person's 
um, uh, profession for the most part. I, I've talked about interacting with Eric Larson. A lot of people said, you know, like, oh, he's just weird. He's so weird. Like, the, why is he weird? I go, he spent most of his adult life alone in a room, you know, seriously. And for most of that before social media. So what's happening is now, instead of finding each other, and if you, if you hear all the stories from the 1990s studios, Extreme, Homage, Top Cow, it was all like, yeah, we drove and then we went to the beach, or we drove and then we went to paintball. The point is they were socializing, they were social. Social media is good, there's a lot of good parts to it. Um, but it's not social in the interaction that people need to be normal. Um, it's at best a kind of uh, a time waster, and it's a good way to meet some people. But you gotta seal the deal. I have friends who I've met through the website uh, or through the you know social media, Twitter, and, and YouTube, and they're really good friends. And the thing is, they're really, really normal. Um, so they're the people who invite me out when I'm just being a shut-in for a week. And you really need some stuff like that. I mean, uh, I definitely am looking to meet people more when I travel. If you know I'm in New York or San Diego, I might be in San Diego next week. Um, uh, but that's good. And so. The thing I'm saying is that, number one, people should, obviously, don't chase away customers, don't block them, but uh, you need to transfer into the real world meeting up and studio. Oh, they even had studios that weren't affiliated with companies. They had Gaijin, which I believe was in Atlanta, and man, a lot of the people you like, uh, Adam Hughes, Cully Hamner, ah, Jason Pearson, a bunch of those people started at um, uh, Gaijin, which was not affiliated with any, it wasn't like Marvel Artist DC image. They worked all different places, but, and uh, I, that, it seems to me that that has mostly gone away because you used to have to move to certain parts of the world to get a job. So there would be a bunch of Marvel artists in New York and some of them, you know, uh, Frank Miller, Walt Simonson, Howard Chaikin, they used to share a little studio space. Um, uh, back in the 70s and that was how you got better it's not just how you got better as an artist it's how you got better as a person um, so I'm going to wrap this up because my battery is just about to die but tell me what you think about this video tell me if you feel this sickness obviously I'm sick so, uh, but it feels like I'm recognizing kind of symbolic sickness even more because uh, I'm feeling so, uh, so ill um, but uh, tell me what you think about this video. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks, everyone. Give it a super chat to Patreon and the Indiegogo goes. I think, I think Iron Sights is going to hit 50,000. And I'm here down where the book is set. So I'm going to start doing a lot of promotion while I'm here. Maybe show you some of the areas, uh, things like that. So that would be a lot of fun. But uh, thanks for watching. And, uh, and I still have more uh, new comics to review later today. So I'll be doing more of those uh, new comics. And I am caught up. I'm caught up. So tomorrow on New Comic Book Day, I'll be going to get the new comics. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll have more new comic reviews up later today.